family, I'm Jill Morricone, and we're so glad that you have tuned in for another edition of 3ABN Sabbath School Panel. We're over halfway through the journey of the book of Psalms, and this is lesson number seven, Your Mercy Reaches Unto the Heavens. Last week was a little heavy. If you joined us for last week, I will arise. This week we have a complete switch in the theme that we are looking at. I want to introduce my family, your family, on the set here. To my left, my sister, Shelley Quinn. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that I will be presenting Create in Me a Clean Heart. Amen. In the middle, Professor Daniel Perrin. And I, too, am excited about my lesson. The title is on Tuesday, If You, Lord, Should Mark Iniquities. Amen. To Daniel's left, Pastor John Denzi. It's a blessing to be here. I have Wednesday, your mercy. Praise to the majestic and merciful God. I almost said the title of the week. Well, the title is great. We can say it many times. <laughs> Last but not least, Pastor James Rafferty. I am super excited about my lesson too. It's to Thursday's lesson. It's called Forget Not All His Benefits. Amen. Thank you all for your study of the Word of God. I know it takes time to prepare for Sabbath School Panel. Thank you for your study. And we want to share with you at home our notes. That's right. If you want a copy of the notes to help you in your own study of the Word of God, email us ssp at 3abn.org. That's ssp at 3abn.org. And we would love to send you our notes from week to week. Before we go any further, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. And Daniel, would you pray for us? Yes, I will. Our loving Heavenly Father, I know that we have in store for us today the opportunity to look straight into your heart of grace, mm -hmm. mercy, and love. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait. Mm -hmm. So Lord, fill us with your presence, your Amen. Holy Spirit, and guide us through your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 These are Jill's three points from this week that we're studying. Your mercy reaches unto the heavens. Number one, we are sinful and spiritually bereft. We're poor and needy. We are in need of forgiveness and grace. Number two, our God is faithful. His mercy, His has said, loving kindness, covenant love endures forever. He is faithful to His covenant with us, His people. He forgives. He cleanses and restores. He keeps covenant with His people and He is good and greatly to be praised. Number three, you and I respond with love and forgiveness, repentance. We come before him with repentance and confession of sin, with praise and adoration for who he is and what he has done for us. We worship him and we commit to serve this God who has been so faithful to us. We serve him after all, only out of love. Let's read our memory text. We're in Psalm 57, verses 9 and 10. Psalm 57, 9 and 10. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations, for your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Mm -hmm. On Sunday's lesson, we look at his mercy endures forever. And we're looking at, in the Psalms, they have some Psalms they call twin Psalms. And this is a twin Psalm. Psalm 135 and 136 correspond. They're kind of mirror Psalms and they correspond together. They comprise what we call the great Hallel, which just means great praise. If you read book five of the Psalms, which is the last book of Psalms, you see that we have the Passover Hallel. That would be in Psalm 113 to 118. You have the final Hallel, which is the very end of the book of Psalms, Psalms 146 to 150. But this particular Hallel praise, the great Hallel, Psalm 135 and 136, reviews the history of Israel and God's divine kingship. And we see that His mercy truly reaches unto the heaven. There's kind of an antiphonal uh, refrain line. So you may say, what in the world is that? Sometimes you might have heard some music where you have a choir sing one piece and then an echo comes in. In this particular psalm, we see the refrain of for his mercy, has said, Shelley, endures forever. And it happens every single verse in the psalm. So we're going to say it together. 
We're in Psalm 136, and we'll see if you all on the panel, when we get to that part, the antiphonal part, the second part, this is the refrain we're going to say together, for his mercy endures forever. So let's take a look at this. The beginning, verses 1 through 3, is really the introduction, and it just starts out in praise to God. Verse 1, we're in Psalm 136, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. We praise him for who he is. He is good. We don't just praise him because of what he does for us, but he has done incredible things for us. But we praise God for who he is. Let's read verse 2. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his, his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. We praise him because he is above all. Our God is omnipotent. He can do anything. Our God is omniscient. He knows everything. Our God is omnipresent. He is everywhere at once. Our God is eternal from everlasting to everlasting. Our God is creator and redeemer. He can create something out of nothing. Amen. I love that. Our God is sustainer. He sustains all. Let's read verse 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. He is the God of gods and the Lord of lords. It's interesting, in Hebrew, there's an idiom. It really means he is the greatest God. Not that there are other gods, but that he is the only God. We praise him because he is everything to us. There is nobody else beside him. Now we get into some of Israel's history. And first, it goes all the way back to creation. We're in verse 4. To him who alone does great wonders, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God can do anything. Verse 5. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God is our creator. Verse 7, to him who made great lights, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. The sun to rule by day, for, for his, his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for, for, his, for his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God is our sustainer. Mm -hmm. He made the earth and then he filled it. He set in emotion and sustains it by his mighty hand. Now we move from creation to the Exodus, going through the history of the children of Israel. I like on a previous lesson, you can go back and watch it, Daniel Perrin talked about the Exodus and how you and I also came out of Egypt. We all experienced deliverance. And Israel's history is not just for the Israelites, but it's for you and I. It's for Jews and Gentiles. It's for anybody who names the name of Jesus because we were all delivered from bondage. We were all delivered from sin. We're in verse 10. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God is our defender. Imagine being the children of Israel and being the slaves, not being able to help yourself, not being able to get out from under bondage, and God arises as your defender. Let's read verse 11 and brought out Israel from among them. For, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God is our deliverer. He brings you and I out of sin, out of darkness into this marvelous light. Verse 12, with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God can work miracles. He can divide the Red Sea. Mm. He can cast out your enemy from before you. He can bring you over on the other side on dry ground. Now we move from the Exodus to the conquest of the land. We're in verse 16. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God is our guide. 
He takes you and I through the wilderness. There's times we don't know where we're going. And he leads us and he guides us, brings us out of sin, brings us through sickness, sometimes doubt, sometimes confusion. Our God is our guide. Verse 17, to him who struck down great kings, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God fights our battles. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Verse 18, and slew famous kings, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God judges the wicked. We've talked many times throughout this study in the Psalms, the lament, how long, O oh Lord, how long? Mm -hmm. How long and will the wicked prosper mm -hmm. and the righteous be oppressed? How long until wrongs are righted? How long until you bring judgment? Right here, we see our God judges the wicked. Verse 21, and gave their land as a heritage for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever, forever, a heritage to Israel his servant. For, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God blesses the righteous. Now we switch to the last few verses and it switches from Israel's history to everyone. This is the entire world. Verse 23, her remembered us in our lowly estate. For his, for his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God never forgets us. He has inscribed us on the palm of his hand. You may feel forgotten, but you are never forgotten by God. Verse 24, and rescued us from our enemies. For his, his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God, your God can deliver you. Verse 25, who gives food to all flesh, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Our God provides for us and feeds us. And then we come to the conclusion, verse 26. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for, for his, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. A couple quick takeaways. Number one, our God, your God, never changes. Number two, choose to praise him regardless of your circumstances. Number three, remember past victories. We were encouraged to read this Psalm, Psalm 135 and 136 many times, even once a week. Why? Because we need to remember who our God is. We need to remember what he did for us in the past. That gives you and I hope and confidence in the future and that your God, my God, his mercy, it endures forever. Amen. Mm. Beautiful opening. Mm. Thank you for letting us participate. Mm. Thank you all. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. I'm Shelley Quinn, and Monday's lesson is Created Me a Clean Heart. If you know anything about the Old Testament, you are probably familiar with the story of King David who committed adultery with Bathsheba, then plotted to have her husband Uriah killed, God sent the prophet Nathan to David to confront him because David despised the word of the Lord. You know what that means to despise the word of the Lord? It means that you have disobeyed God. Mm. So Nathan pronounces a judgment against him. David recognizes he sinned against the Lord. Sin is contrary, incompatible, compatible to yeah. God's government of love, and it violates his authority. Mm -hmm. So actually all sin is against God. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2 Samuel 12 and verse 13, listen to what David says. David tells him, you're the man, you're the one who's done this dirty deed. Nathan, Nathan tells him. Nathan, oh, he said this to David. 2 Samuel 12, 13, David then responds to Nathan saying, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord has put away your sin, you shall not die. Well, I heard a whole sermon over the radio once when we were in the car and uh, this pastor saying, see, you don't have to, you don't have to repent. When, when, da when Nathan tells David, the Lord has put away your sin, you shall not die. 
let me assure you, this is a very compressed, condensed story mm -hmm. between David recognizing his sin and Nathan announcing that God has put away his sin comes Psalm 51. Mm. I'll prove that to you. Let's look mm. at Psalm 51. This is one of the seven penitential yes. psalms. It's the greatest psalm in my estimation of confession, repentance, and conversion by God's grace. So when you look at Psalm 51, here's how it starts. To the chief musician, a psalm of David when, written when, mm. Nathan the prophet went to him after he'd gone to Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. So here's what happens. David, Nathan confronts David. David then goes into this Psalm of Repentance. Verse one, Psalm 51, one. And oh, if you wanna learn how to repent, if you don't know how to confess your sin, this is such a beautiful example. Mm -hmm. David cries out, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. This is that word you mentioned, has said. It's used 240 times in the Old Testament. It is my favorite Hebrew word. It's a covenant language word, and it encapsulates such a great meaning that Bible translators have a hard time mm. figuring out what to do with it. Mm. It can be translated grace, kindness, loving kindness, faithfulness. This is God's mercy and loyalty. It's all combined in that one word. So he says, he goes on in Psalm 51, uh, we're still in verse one. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. David knew that there was a book that God recorded all of our deeds in. Mm -hmm. See, you know why God does that? Because when it comes time for the judgment, he wants to judge mm -hmm. fairly according to everyone's personal choices. So we have to remember that Forgiveness is an extraordinary gift of God. It's according to the multitude of his tender mercies. Now listen, verse two, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Oh Lord, wash me thoroughly, cleanse me of my sin. I pray it like this, oh, wash me thoroughly in the blood of Jesus Christ because the Bible tells us it's the blood of Christ that cleanses us. But the word thoroughly there in the Hebrew, it meant multiple times. Wash me repeatedly, Lord. Verse three, for I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is always before me against you. You only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. David had tragically wronged Bathsheba mm -hmm and Uriah. Mm -hmm. Yet he knew, as 1 John 3, 4 tells us, sin is the transgression of God's law. He knew he had sinned against the authority of God, and that's why he is saying this. Verse 5, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. David was not conceived out of wedlock. His mother was a virtuous woman. She's even called in other scripture, a handmaiden of the Lord. So what does he mean here? He was born with a fallen human nature and a propensity towards sin. So he says in verse six, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Oh, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. In the Levitical law, only hyssop could cleanse someone from their defilement of touching a corpse or if they had leprosy. Ah, David, you know, the lepers were banned from God's, well, all unclean people were banned from God's presence. So David recognizes the leprosy of sin has defiled him and he feels like 
He's been banned from God's presence and he wants to return to God's presence. Verse 8, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken, the bones that you have crushed by the weight of sin's guilt, really, may rejoice. Hide your sins from me and blot out all of my iniquities. What are we promised in 1 John 1, 9? If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Verse 10, I love this part. Mm -hmm. David cries out to the Lord, create in me a clean heart, yes. O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In the Hebrew, there's two words for create, yatsar and bara. Mm -hmm. Yatsar means, it, it describes human actions to generate, produce, or establish something from pre-existing elements. Bara means to create something out of nothing. That's right. And it is only used yeah. for God. Amen. Only God can create something out of nothing. The interesting thing is in verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God. The word David used is bara. Mm -hmm. What does that say to you? Only God mm. can create a clean heart. Amen. There's nothing that you can do. Our, our best acts are like filthy rags. Our righteousness are like filthy rags before him. Mm -hmm. Only God can restore a clean heart. You cannot do this on your own. But as you submit to God's power, you know what he promises, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that he will make you a new creation in Amen. Christ Jesus and renew that steadfast spirit in you as you yield to the Holy Spirit's leading. Verse 11. Do not cast me away from your presence. Mm -hmm. David says, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. I remember probably 30 years ago, I kind of got off track. And I forgot about the joy of God's salvation. And I remember praying this prayer and I was going, oh Lord, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. We can begin to take it for granted, yeah. but he says, uphold me by your generous spirit, then I will teach transgressors your way. Sinners will be converted to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, when we understand the joy of God's salvation, we can't help but share. When God creates a clean heart in us, we can't help mm. but testify that His mercy that's endures right. forever. Amen. Oh, that's powerful, Shelley. I love that. No matter what you've done, there is forgiveness in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Ever wish you could study more deeply along with the three ABN Sabbath School panel members? Well, now you can. Just send an email request to ssp at 3abn.org and we'll email you the Sabbath School panelist notes on a weekly basis to enhance your own study of God's Word. That address again is ssp at 3abn.org. We'd love to send you their notes just as they've prepared them. Thank you for watching and thank you for being part of our 3ABN Sabbath School panel family. Welcome back to lesson number seven. Your mercy reaches unto the heavens. We're going to continue with Tuesday lesson and Daniel Perrin. Thank you. I'm Daniel Perrin with Tuesday and the title is If You, Lord, Should Mark Iniquities. Now, I am loving this lesson and just so you know, anybody who should ever say to you or if you should hear, grace comes in the New Testament. This, okay, read the book of Psalms. Uh, I tried to make a list of, of forgiveness, grace, mercy in the Psalms, and there's no point in even trying to start a list. You just will not get to the end of it. Wow. The title, If You, Lord, Should Mark Iniquities, comes from a very short psalm, Psalm 130, just eight little verses. It's one of the Psalms of Ascent. 
Mm. Ascent means going up, one of the pilgrimage psalms, because when you went to Jerusalem, Jerusalem was the city on the hill. And so you always ascended to Jerusalem. So this is one of those songs that you would sing as you are going to the sanctuary. Mm. And at the sanctuary, there is forgiveness through the sacrifice, which is Jesus. Mm. So let's take that title, If You, Lord, Should Mark Iniquities, and let me just restate that a little bit. If you, Lord, kept score, <laughs> I don't know if you like playing games where you keep score. Some people, they don't want the stress of that. And no, no, I don't want to keep score. Other people, I want to know who wins. I want to know who loses. Sometimes we might say this, if you, Lord, were fair, sometimes we demand God be fair. If you treated me the way I treat you, <laughs> if you mark iniquities, let's say it this way, Lord, if you scrutinized me, if you pull out the rule book, if you conducted an audit of my life, mm. if you, Lord, kept a record of all my thoughts, mm. words, and actions, wait, yeah. that is what's going on. <laughs> God is keeping a record. As you mentioned, there is a book and my life is recorded in it. And so that is why we have statements like this in Revelation 6, 17, for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand mm -hmm. because I know what's written in my book. Isaiah 6, verse 5, Woe is me, for I am undone, mm. because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Sometimes we in this life go boldly strutting around as if God owes us something, <laughs> and we are entitled to this life like we are created it, and we set all the rules, mm. and we can make demands upon God, and yet we forget a couple of pivotal verses, Genesis 2, 17. Don't eat the, tr the fruit of that tree. On the day you eat of it, you will surely or certainly die. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, death mm -hmm. and I have sinned, and so have you. Think of what this means. The slightest deviation, just the most minuscule, infinitesimal, millimeter deviation, just a little tiny bit off of God's perfect plan is off of God's perfect plan. Yeah. And it results in death forever. And this impresses upon us the absolute hopelessness of our situation apart from God's mercy that reaches to the heavens. One of the criticisms that is leveled against Christian churches and pastors or teachers is that they're always telling people <laughs> that they're sinners. Mm. And there's some validity to this because we do need to be guided by the Holy Spirit in the way we address sin and sinners. But the implication of this criticism is that I'm fine the way I am. <laughs> Don't make me feel bad about ourself, myself. Our culture is so, uh, so wrapped up in self-image and self-respect and self-esteem and self-worship that there's a pressure upon us to affirm everybody and to only praise them and say what's good about them. And so we inflate our own goodness like that wise proverb then says, Proverbs 12, 15, a fool is wise in his own eyes. And if we're honest, we then sometimes accuse God of being too judgmental of our sins. And so that's part of what we're saying when we say, I feel like I'm okay. Sometimes we hear a preacher talk and he's revealing one of those hidden habits of our life. We're like, oh, I don't want to hear that yet. No, 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 I'm not ready to stop enjoying that just yet, but uh, give, give me a little while, I'll wait. I'm not to be the judge, not me. I'm not the judge of any person's life, but I got to tell you that the good news the forgiveness of God, the good news always starts with the bad news. Mm. So Psalm 130 should be our prayer, all of us. It starts like this, verse one, out of the depths, I cry to you, yeah. O Lord. Out of the depths, I was down at the very bottom, no chance of escape. This is the sinner shall die for his sins, the wages of sin. Out of the depths, I cried, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? We find this idea all over in the Psalms. 25 verse 7, do not remember the sins of my youth. Have you ever sorrowed for your sins? 
-hmm. or for the sins of others, mm -hmm. for my sins. Sometimes we treat sin like an academic concept that we do a book review on, <laughs> not what it truly is. Maybe you've spent time in a hospital yourself or observing others where somebody gets bad news and they break down in sobs and weeping uncontrollably because of the bad news. Have you ever cried, wept for your sins because of what they've done, not just because of what they've done to you, but because of what they do to God? If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, in other words, if you should make me bear the weight of my sin. But let's turn that around. Lord, you did mark iniquities. You go through my life with a fine tooth comb, looking for every sinful thought or priority or action or glance or offhanded remark or exaggeration of the truth or selfishness, no matter how small. And it's hard as we say, Lord, mark my iniquities because every iniquity that God marks, he removes from us and places on himself. Mm. Mm. So here, very slowly, after that verse three, if you mark iniquities, who can stand? Here comes verse four. Mm. But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. As a loving parent, God says this, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you, mm. but I've got to find everything. I've got to get it all. Like the surgeon who says, I've got to get every bit of that cancer, that sickness out. Oh, hey, hold on. Can we leave just a little bit of it? No, I've got to get it all. I've got to find it all. Every sin that is a barb in my flesh, Jesus says, that's got to be placed in my flesh. Mm. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity mm. of us all. Yes. That story that, that Shelley referenced, David and Bathsheba, mm. I cannot believe that David was having a really good prayer life up until that point. It was eating him up. Oh, it was awful. He didn't want to go to the sanctuary. He didn't want to come into God's presence because he had that in there. And then 2 Samuel 12, 13, David confessed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan replied, yes, but the Lord has forgiven you and you won't die for your sins. Mm. I can picture David breaking down in sobs. I won't die. The Lord has forgiven me. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you marked my iniquities, Lord, I couldn't stand. Mm -hmm. You have marked them and you've taken them off of me. Mm -hmm. This is why in Psalm 139, right there at the end, verse 23 and 24, mm -hmm. search me, O God, mm -hmm. know my heart, Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way. Lord, Lord, look, I'll open up, take a look at everything. Whatever there is, please find it all. Mark my iniquities. And then we can sing Psalm 32. Join me in Psalm 32. Amen. Blessed is he whose transgression yes. is forgiven. I don't know if there's a tune, but I feel like singing. <laughs> whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Paul quotes this in Romans. Blessed is the one who's forgiven. Mm -hmm. When I kept silent, my bones grew old. This is a picture of David waiting before he's confronted by Nathan. Mm. Though through my groaning all the day long, for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I couldn't even go on. Oh, it's just every step was torture. I could not get it out of my mind. And then verse five. I acknowledged my sin to you. Lord, mark my iniquities, every one of them, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you have for, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And this is a great selah, a pause, peace, and rest. If you marked iniquity, Lord, for me to pay, then I'd have to pay it all, mm. and my life would be over. But God marks iniquity in a different way, not to show it to us, to show us what we've done wrong, but to say, look what the Lord has borne for you yes. so that you can be free and you can praise the Lord as King David did. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We have been to church over and over again <laughs> as we have been in this study. Uh, my name is John Dinsey. This is Wednesday's portion. The title is Praise to the Majestic and Merciful God. I love that title. Mm. 
And this portion of the lesson takes us to Psalm 113 and 123. And we're going to take a look at other places as well. Psalm 113, beginning in verse 1. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. I believe we do not praise the Lord nearly yes. enough. Mm -hmm. And so we should take time to consider the mm -hmm. great and wonderful things He has done for us. I remember a call that came in one time. It uh, was a live program. And uh, Danny announced, if you have something to praise the Lord for, give us a phone call right in. And this man called and said, what do I have to be thankful to the Lord for? Mm. Well, this surprised me. And I believe the Lord gave him a good uh, few questions. Well, are you in prison? No, the man said. Are you in jail? Are you uh, in the hospital? No, the man said. Are you in an insane asylum? <laughs> no, I'm not. Did you get to eat anything today? Yes, I did. I guess I do have things to be thankful for. <laughs> yes, give those things some thought, I told him. And uh, we do have things to be thankful for. Every day the Lord brings blessings to us. Even the very breath that we take Thank every you. moment of the day is a gift from the Lord. So I consider you, I invite you to consider writing down the things may, maybe that you haven't thought of, that the Lord has been good to you. Mm -hmm. and because it is the Lord that gives us strength and health to be able to even work, to be able to put food up on our tables. Mm -hmm. The Lord is good to every single one. In Luke 17, we see a story of Jesus going to Jerusalem. And as he entered a village, 10 people full of leprosy came mm. to him. And uh, Lord, uh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. Mm -hmm. And on their way, they were all healed. And only one, only one came and said thanks to Jesus. And I like what it says in Luke 17, 16. And he fell down on his face at his feet and gave thanks and he was a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. He said this in a loud voice. And Jesus said, well, were, were there not 10 cleansed? Why is there only one? Mm -hmm. And so if you pray to the Lord and the Lord answers your prayer, thank the Lord. Very thank the good. Lord because he is good to you and to me and to everyone that's within the hearing of my voice. Psalm 113, we now move to verse four. Notice the transition that takes place here as we move from verse 4 through 6. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory above the heavens. Nothing can compare to our Lord, our Creator, our Almighty God. He is high above all. Who is like the Lord our God who dwells on high? Now notice verse 6 who humbles himself mm -hmm. to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. This is a question. God humbles himself mm -hmm. just to even look upon us and just to even hear our prayer. He humbles himself because he is our heavenly father. He's concerned about each and every one of us. Many of you perhaps are married have you taken time to number the hairs of the head of your spouse? <laughs> it might be an easy task for my wife, but listen, ah. we don't even take time to look at things that God looks into our lives. He is yeah. concerned about every single aspect of our lives. Now, concerning God humbling himself, the greatest manifestation of his humility is found through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why I moved to Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant mm -hmm. and coming in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. Imagine Jesus was high above the angels, mm -hmm. high as the heavens above the angels, surpassing anything the angels can ever come to. And then the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 that he became lower than the angels and became mm -hmm. a man. Mm -hmm. And even not only, not only did he become a man, mm -hmm. we have to consider that he became a man after about 
uh, 4,000 years of sin. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then it says here in verse 8, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. And you're wondering if you should humble yourself before God. Consider mm -hmm. how much Jesus humbled himself and even to take your sins upon him mm -hmm. who was spotless, holy, blameless, undefiled, took your filthy sins, my filthy sins upon him. This is amazing. This yeah. should humble us mm -hmm. to understand God's great love and how much he is willing to humble himself for us. Psalms 113 continues in verse 7. Notice, He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap, that He may seat him with princes and with the princes of His people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. You know, God continues to do these type of things. He brings people from the ground, from the dust, and He places them according to what He knows is best, where they need to be. But our part is to humble ourselves and serve the Lord with all of our heart. We are told also to compare Psalms 123, considering God's merciful and majesty and holiness, in verse 1, it says, notice, Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, as of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until He has mercy on us. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we're pleading to the Lord for something, and we give up so soon or too soon to see the answer He wants to give us. When we have a situation we're praying to the Lord for, it's an opportunity to get even closer to the Lord, present our need. But some of us too soon give up and too soon I say, well, walking away and you look for answers where there are no good answers. As we move to verse 3 in Psalms 123, there is a change that takes place. Remember, we started in verse 1, where it says, Unto you I lift up my eyes. Now notice verse 3, Have mercy on us. Now it's mm -hmm. plural, because he is also considering his people. And this is something that we can take from the lesson even of Samuel. He says, How can I sin in ceasing to pray for you, for the people? Mm -hmm. We need to identify with God's family on this earth and not only pray for ourselves, our family, we need to pray for God's people all over the world. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease with the contempt of the proud. In the little time that we have, we take a look at some of the things uh, here. There is a change to the plural. And this idea being, notice how it says, he is uh, exceedingly filled with contempt, not just filled with contempt, exceedingly. This is a, a condition where calling upon the Lord to have mercy, especially because of the situation that uh, they are facing. And uh, notice how it also says, exceedingly filled with scorn of those rarities with the contempt of the proud. Sometimes we face situations where we see the wicked that seem to be triumphing over the righteous and we may get discouraged as we see this and we call upon the Lord to help us and in our condition, we must understand that uh, Psalms 103, verse 10 and 11, He has not dealt with us according to our sins, mm -hmm. nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward those who fear Him. Asking the Lord for mercy, His ears are attentive. You're asking mm -hmm. me for mercy because He is a merciful God and He... It understands your situation and He will look for ways where you cannot even imagine to help you in your situation and lift you up and lift up your countenance. But 
there's something that we must remember as we're asking for the Lord for mercy because He will work in our behalf and work out the best for us, but we must remember to thank the Lord for His goodness and His mercy. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. You just uh, picked up or left off right. I'm supposed to pick up Psalm 103. Psalm 103, that's what I have for the lesson here. Forget not all his benefits. My name is James Rafferty. I really am thankful, Jill, for you reminding us that God's mercy endures forever. And Shelley reminding us that only God can create a clean heart. Mm. And Daniel reminding us that God wants every bit of our sin cancer. And John for reminding us that God humbled himself and took our sins. The question is asked by the lesson quarterly for Thursday is, how is God's mercy betrayed here? in Psalm 103. Verse one says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That's what we're gonna land on, forget not all his benefits. We need to learn how to remember all God's benefits. Mm -hmm. And yes. the way we do that is very practical. Who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases. Psalm 32, one and two, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. Christ, God imputed iniquity unto Christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, so that he could not count our sins against us. Yeah. And this is something we see outlined in the great chapter of Isaiah 53. Verse 12, we'll just look at that one verse. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. As Shelley said, David was praying against thee and thee only have I sinned because according to Isaiah 53, 12, only Jesus Christ has paid the ultimate price for our sins. Mm -hmm. No human being has paid that ultimate price. We sin against humans, but only God has taken upon himself the ultimate consequence of those sins. And so one, Psalm 103, verse four goes on to say, and I love this, this whole Psalm is just so powerful. Mm -hmm. Who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. There it is, there's the practical part. If we're crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies, what's that gonna look like in our lives? Mm -hmm. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, our mouths are satisfied with good things. So that means nothing bad is gonna come out of our mouth if God is satisfying our mouth with good things. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So God wants to work through us through his loving kindness to exercise judgment and righteousness for all those who are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Verse eight, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Praise God, he has not marked our sins. <laughs> against mm -hmm. us. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so is yeah. his great mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. Mm -hmm. For he knows our frame, he remembers we are dust. Mm -hmm. How many ways can this be said? How many ways can God communicate the gospel to us yes. in the Psalms? For as a man, for as for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it is gone and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord, mm -hmm. the mercy of the Lord, it's not like that. It doesn't come and go. Mm -hmm. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children of men. The lesson says, how then should people respond to God's loving kindness? Well, first, by blessing the Lord, Psalm 103, one and two, and blessing is generally understood as an act of bestowing material and spiritual benefits upon someone, according to Genesis 49, 25 and Psalm 5, 12. The lesson goes on to say that because God is the source of all blessings, how can human beings bless God? How can an inferior bless a superior, right? Well, we know how it looked in David's life, right? David wanted to bless the Lord through his soul by forgetting not all of his benefits. And when we remember God's benefits, the number one way we remember God's benefits is to remember God's forgiveness toward us, right? 
We see this in the life of, of David in relationship to Saul. Saul mistreated David. He hounded him, tried to kill him, take him out. But David remembered all of God's benefits, all of God's blessings, right? And so David said, I'm not going to put more forth my hand against the Lord's anointed because I'm, I'm dwelling, I'm basking in the benefits of the Lord, right? And then what about Shimei? Shimei was cursing David, you know, oh, you bloody man, you bloody man. And David's men said, hey, just say the word. We'll take that guy out. No, 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 no. God will reward him for what he's doing today, that he's in God's hands. I don't want to forget God's benefits. I don't want to forget God's blessings. I don't want to forget all that God has showered me with. What about Absalom? Absalom tried to kill his own father and take the kingdom. Oh, no, no, don't, don't do any hurt to the lad. I mean, if we're going to err, we got to err on the side of mercy. I think, right. I think he was erring. I think he was erring on the side of mercy, but he was erring, right? He was reminded of that. And so we see this this in the in in David's life we see the way that David remembered all of God's benefits you know and in uh, second Peter chapter one we're told about this ladder that God wants us to to climb w through his great and precious promises right adding uh, uh, faith and virtue to knowledge and knowledge to temperance and temperance patience and patience godliness and godliness uh, brotherly kindness and brotherly kindness kindliness kindliness charity or love right for if all these things be in you and abound, they make that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter one, verse eight, verse nine. But he that lacks these things is blind. He cannot see afar off and he has forgotten. He has forgotten, right? What has he forgotten? What is it that we're supposed to remember? What is it that we forget? He's forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Yeah. We've forgotten how God has forgiven us when we get that Laodicean blindness and feel like we're rich and increased with goods. We've forgotten how God, so wherefore, verse 10 says, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling election sure for if you do these things, you will never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will be, not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, how you were forgiven, that though you know them, that you may be established in mm -hmm. the present truth. The only place in the Bible that that phrase is used, the present yeah. truth. And here's the present truth. You know, we think the present truth is all kinds of stuff. Well, here's the present truth. Don't forget how God has forgiven you and you go ahead and forgive others the way that God has forgiven you. That's the present truth. Amen. It's good. And this beautiful picture is summed up in the story of a man by the name of Stockbridge Howland. You ever heard of the name of uh, the story of Stockbridge Howland? Mm -mm. Well, let me tell you the story of Stockbridge Howland. Years ago, when the company of believers in the soon coming of Christ was very small, the Sabbath keepers in Thompson, Maine met for worship in a large kitchen in the home of Brother Stockbridge Howland. One Sabbath morning, Brother Howland was absent. We were surprised at this because he was always so punctual, kind of like me, right? Soon he came in with his face aglow, <laughs> shining with the glory of God. Brethren, he said, I have found it. I have found that we can pursue a course of action regarding the which the guarantee of God's word is you shall never fall. He's quoting from Second Peter. You shall never fall. And I'm going to tell you about it. He told us then that he had noticed that one brother, a poor fisherman, had been feeling that he was not as highly respected as he ought to be. And the brother Howland and others thought themselves above him. Now, this was not true, but it seemed true to him, and for several week, weeks he had not attended the meetings. So Brother Howland went to his house and knelt before him, saying, My brother, forgive me. What is it that I have done? Mm. The man took him by the arm and tried to raise him to his feet. No, Brother Howland said, What have you against me? Oh, I have nothing against you, but, but you must have, said Brother Howland, because once we could speak to one another, but now you do not speak to me at all. Mm. And I want to know what is the matter. Get up, Brother Howland, he said. No, said Brother Howland, I will not. Then I must get down, he said. And he fell on his knees and confessed how childish he had been and how many evil surmises he had cherished. And now, he said, I will put them all away. As Brother Howland told the story, his face shone with the glory of God. Just as he had finished, the fisherman and his family came in, and we had an excellent meeting in Brother Stockbridge Howland's kitchen. Now, suppose that some of us should follow that course pursued by Brother Howland. If when our brethren surmise evil, if we would go to them saying, Forgive me if I have done anything to harm you, we might break the spell of Satan 
and set our brethren free from their temptations. Do not let anything interpose between you and your brethren. If there's anything that you can do by sacrifice to clear away the rubbish of suspicion, do it. God wants us to love one another as brethren. He wants us to be pitiful and courteous. He wants us to educate ourselves, to believe that our brethren love us, and to believe that Christ loves us because love begets love. Mm -hmm. And that's Testimonies, Volume 9, page 192. God is calling us to humble ourselves as Christ humbled himself, not to mark people's iniquities against us, to, to let him create in us a clean heart, to remember his mercies that endure forever, and to remember that mm -hmm. in the way that we are merciful and gracious toward others. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor James and Pastor Johnny and Daniel and Shelley. What an incredible lesson. Your mercy reaches unto the heavens. I want to give each one of you an opportunity to share a closing thought. Um, my closing thought is this. Every day I tell the Lord that I hunger and thirst for His righteousness mm -hmm. and ask Him to fill me. I ask Him to forgive me of my sins, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, and I claim Psalm 51, verse 10, and say, Lord, I know only you can create the clean heart in me, and I thank you that you will complete the good work you've begun. Amen. Forget not all his benefits, mm -hmm. but one of those benefits is Psalm 51, verse 11. Yes. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. God gives us the Holy Spirit, which then in turn reveals our sin, which you would think is a bad thing, but that is a wonderful thing. Amen. Because then that brings us to the God, Psalm 86, 5, for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive Amen. and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. God's ready to forgive today. Mm -hmm. Amen. I also want to encourage you to make a list of the wonderful things God has done for you today. Mm -hmm. And also, if you need mercy, I read to you Psalms 40, verse 11, do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me bring this to the Lord and ask for His mercy. Amen. Amen. And if there's anyone that you know of that could use a little bit of that uh, forgiveness, that grace, that mercy mm -hmm. that you could reach out to, that you could even humble yourself before, grab a hold of them and encourage them to make the heart right, to reconcile the relationship with you if necessary, if need be, but primarily with God. Do it. Pray about it and do it. Amen. Thank you all so much. And we thank you for joining us as well, our three ABN Sabbath School panel. We started our memory text with Psalm 5710, which says, Your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth to the clouds. Pastor James ended with Psalm 103, or in his lesson, he talked about who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. You see, God has mercy, which he imparts to us. And once we are forgiven, and we are to extend that mercy to someone else. So go out and love on someone today. Join us next week, Wisdom for Righteous Living.